Hi, welcome to our settings tutorial. Here I'm going to show you how to set things up for your property so you can run Roomsy easier and faster. Let's get started by clicking on settings in the top right corner. And you'll see that you're in the general settings tab. And right now you're looking at the property information. Here you can set up your time zone. So you can set it up accordingly to which time zone you're in. And the selling date is the current selling date for your business. It, this will directly reflect on uh, the selling day that's displayed on the top right corner. I recommend you not to change it unless absolutely necessary because your selling day should only change when you click on the night audit every night or every morning. So that's, oh, and um, as for the rest of the property information, um, such as address, phone number, and the website, these will show up on your invoices, online reservation, or emails. As for employees, uh, this is where you can add other people to use Roomsy uh, to uh, manage your property with you. Uh, you can assign different permissions for your employees and to add an employee all you have to do is enter their name and the email address. What happens after you click on the add employee button is that they're gonna get an email saying that they got a, 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 an account created by Roomsy and all they have to do is approve it, set up their password and they're good to go. So you don't have to do anything all you gotta do is add their credentials here and click on add employee. As for the night audit settings, um, it's actually it actually takes a while for me to explain, so I'm gonna cover that in a different tutorial called the night audit tutorial. So we'll go over that there. Um, as for policies, this is where you can display um, for your customers. You can display your hotel's policies, such as your check-in policy. Um, for example. Um, we are not responsible for damage or lost items. For example, your check-in policies that people take a look at and they can sign up on their registration card. And underneath here is the reservation policy where it's going to be displayed while your customers are making an online reservation. So I'm actually going to update that and go on to the next tab, which is room inventory. Within room inventory, there are three settings, rooms, room types, and housekeeping. So as for the room settings, here is where you can actually add or modify the rooms that are displayed on the main page. I'm just going to quickly show the main page. So if you take a look, these are the rooms listed. And you can actually modify all these within the, the room inventory settings page as displayed here. For example, I can change the room type for room 101 to a different room type. I can make it so if it can be sold online oops, yes I can change it so if it can be sold online or not and I can also change the room name if I wanted to so I'm gonna leave it the way it is you can also delete the room or you can add a new room as for the room types uh, right now I have three room types as you saw in the rooms page um, so these are the acronyms SB, SU, DLX, single suite and deluxe so there are three room types as you saw you can change those. Uh, right now you have three options. If I add more room types, then I'm gonna see more room type options within the rooms page. Housekeeping settings. So here you can automate the process of housekeeping where you can clean all the rooms after three o'clock instead of you having to go to the housekeeping page and clean all the rooms manually. Roomsy will take care of that for you as long as this option is enabled. And yes, again, you can set up the time here. So you can set up when the rooms should be cleaned after what time. Housekeeping report is where you can um, automate the process of telling the housekeepers when the guest's bed sheet should be cleaned. How the intervals. So as you can see here, it says change stained guest bed sheet every five days. You can set it four, or you can change it every week. It's up to you, but you can change it here. And um, you know, there's an example here. And if you want to disable this feature, you can just enter zero here, and the rooms is not going to use this feature. I'm going to leave it as five days for now. And let's go to accounting. Accounting is very straightforward. Um, first is the invoice settings. You can change a company logo. You can choose a file and upload it. Very simple. And you can also change the invoice header. Um, such as you can say things like uh, thank you for staying with us if you have any specials let them know stuff like that you can enter whatever you want here 
charge types. These are the charge types that are, that are displayed within the invoice. Uh, let me show you what I mean. So right now I have room charge, service charge, restaurant charge, and gratuity charge. Uh, some have taxes, some don't. You can assign them by checking on them or not. You can also delete or add charge types. If uh, all these charge types will be displayed on your invoice. So if I go to booking and let's open the invoice for this customer. Here you can add either new charge type or payment. The charge types are displayed in red, payments are displayed in green. And as you can see, there are four charge types, the, the ones that I mentioned before in the charge type settings page, room charge, service charge, restaurant charge, and gratuity. So if you want to add a new charge, such as um, they stay, and I'm going to charge in with the room charge, add, and you can see that uh, the tax is applied, 5% and there's a charge so uh, which this is gonna actually make it easier for you to understand um, where payment oops, gonna leave the page where payment settings come in so here you basically know what the charge types are you can also change their names and whatnot also the taxes by the way I only have a one tax GST which is um, which influences what taxes are displayed within the charge types and Payment types are the ones that were in green. So these are the payments that, that you accept from the customers. You can add or delete or change names here as well. Next is rate plans. Rate plan is completely optional. You don't have to use rate plan if, you, um, if you're not willing to use the online reservation or if you don't like to automate things. Um, to give you a um, brief overview how rate plan works, it's basically a automation of rates so uh, if it, it basically eliminates your need to tell your employees what the rates are your employees can just basically follow the rate plan that has been created let's take a look at the daily rate so there's one that's already created uh, for the single room type every room type can have a rate plan so this is for the suite this is for the deluxe if you add more in room types and they're gonna be displayed here but let's take a look at the one that's already created for single room type so I'm going to click on daily rate and you can see the name, uh, what room type it belongs to, what kind of charge types are charged for this rate plan and the description. You can also upload an image that can be displayed on online reservation. The base rate is, is $50 here for the rate for additional adult. So each additional adult. So, if, so if, for example, if there's two adults staying, then they're gonna, the rate plan is going to charge $10 extra. Uh, same thing for the child if this rate plan is available for online booking minimum length of stay so the minimum amount of the days that the, the the guest has to stay in order to be qualified for this rate plan and the maximum dates that they can stay one to nine hundred and ninety nine is default and the number of adults included in the base rate what this does is um, it allows the rate plan to absorb up to a certain number of the adults without having to change the rate. So for example, if your hotel charges charges the, the room based on, you know, it doesn't matter if there's two adults or one adult, you, you charge the same rate of $50. Then you would change it to two because it doesn't matter up to two adults. But if you charge an additional $10 after two adults, so if there's three people, then you charge 60, then this would be the setting that you would want okay um, but I'm gonna change it to one adult for now and I'm gonna go ahead and save it I didn't really change anything anyways um, before I go uh, further I'm gonna show you the uh, other settings for editing the rate plan so this here basically changes the perpetual rate plan it, it applies to every day however you can modify it so it changes day by day your rate plan let me show you. So click on modify individual date and you can see that there's a calendar uh, shows you December 22nd, 23rd and whatnot and you can actually change the rate day by day. So if you have a certain seasonal rate, seasonal pricing, package pricing up to you, you can actually change them here day by day. So here I'm going to charge 150 all of a sudden because it's a busy season and then it's back to 50. You can do this and uh, you can also change the restrictions where oh, okay this day you can 
you know, uh, you're not accepting any new arrivals. Um, these days, the rate plan cannot be sold online. Um, these days, people have to stay two days. Things like that, you can modify all that here. Um, I'm actually not gonna change the settings though. And uh, also, if you have a, a uh, if you wanna modify the long periods instead of having to go through each individual date changing them, then you can do that. I'm gonna leave this page. You can do that by going to modify long periods, and you can say starting from 23rd to 31st, applying to all weekdays. So I'm just gonna select the weekdays. I'm gonna set the base rate to 60, and for adult is 10, and for a child is 5. So things like that. You can actually apply long period of the date by using the modify long periods. So um, let me show you how this reflects to the bookings. Let me go back to bookings. And let me open this booking that I already created. You can see that there is an option saying use a rate plan. Right now, uh, right now it's not using the rate plan and it's charging the guest $50 every night. But if you decide to use the rate plan, oh, so, oh, by the way here, because the, the room type SU, which stands for suite, it, because the suite doesn't have any rate plans, Rooms it tells you that you have to set up a rate plan. But uh, we did set up a rate plan for the single room, which is SB. I click on that and see that there is a one rate plan available, daily rate. So because I'm using the daily rate plan, you can see that the rate is set as $50. And if you want to uh, see a detailed information of how the rate is being charged, just put a mouse cursor on top of this uh, icon, uh, information icon, and you can see how the rate is being charged throughout the, the guest stay. So that's how rate plan works. You can, again, automate this. You know, say if I change the number of the adult to 2, you'll see the rate goes up by $10 and so on. So it's really nice, you know, it automates the whole rate process so you don't have to educate your employees just make them to use your rate plan close okay so went through the rate plan here the next option is extra extra uh, there's a long explanation here as you can see but putting it in a nutshell what extra does is it allows you to add an extra charges that are charged uh, on a nightly basis or once when they check in, bunch of different options you can set up. Let me just create an example for you. It's, for me, it's the best way to explain anything. Let me say there is a scuba diving extra where people can either choose to purchase it or not. And the extra type is item or rental. I'm going to say it's a rental. The difference is item gets charged on every daily basis, um, which is um, for example, if the guest is staying for five days, it's going to charge for five days. However, if you go with the rental, did I say item or rental? The prior one was for the item. So item gets charged five days if the guest is staying for five days. But as for rental, if the guest is staying five days, rental gets charged four times. Because it, it gets charged every night, just like the room charges. So that's the difference. I'm going to say uh, it's a rental. And how are you going to charge it? Charging scheme. You can either charge it on a starting date once, or you can charge it every day. I'm going to say it gets, it gets charged every day. And the charge type, the charge type I want to apply on, I'm going to say it's a service charge. And it's going to be $50 every night. Save. Okay, so you can see that you created a new extra called scuba diving. Now, if you go to bookings, you're going to notice an a new option called the uh, uh, oh it's bottom here you can actually add a new extra so click on new extra you'll see that there's a scuba diving option you can set a starting and ending date uh, the duration of the scuba diving that this customer is going to use how many and the rate so it's all set I'm going to save it and you'll also notice that on the invoice this extra is reflected as you can see down here, upcoming charges, scuba diving from this date to that date, it's going to be this much. Okay, so that's what basically extra does. All right, and the currencies, it's really straightforward. What? Oh, okay. <laughs> By, I don't have an access under the account that I'm using right now, 
but currency is really straightforward all it does is basically what currency are you use what currency are you using for your property and you can just set different currencies based on what currency you're using let's go take a look at a uh, online reservation within the online reservation settings um, you can choose if you want to accept a PayPal payment so I can enable it enter your PayPal email address that you want to accept the money in and how much deposit amount you require in order for your guests to confirm their reservations um, or you can just disable it and this here is a code that you wanna put on your website if you wanna accept an online reservation so basically all you have to do is um, get someone who knows how to design your website get them to put this code in the website and you will see an online reservation uh, that looks something like this let me show it to you so here's an example website that uses our online reservation once you enter that code you'll see that there's a box that allows people to make reservations select a date and so on let's go back to our um, settings oh, right there okay so that's for online reservation and uh, as to customize the email uh, that is basically the email your customers will, will receive once they create an online reservation and the Expedia Hotels.com integration is where you can enter your credentials for your Expedia and um, it will actually allow you to integrate with the Expedia where you can receive bookings and you can update your hotels availabilities and reach and all the information with ease um, of course here it says uh, it's uh, invalid information so we got an error but once you enter the right information you can modify all that. Uh, we'll cover more on this topic later uh, within the uh, the OTA or Expedia and Hotels integration tutorial video. But basically, this is it. This is um, the settings option. If you have any questions, please um, contact us by clicking on the, the help section on the top right corner. And uh, thank you for watching, and have a great day.